in our quest to understand mediumship, spiritualism, and so on on this channel, psychics explain, I think it's important that we look at literature that has been created from you know the past. Uh, this book I'm going to be talking about right now is definitely from the past. It is written by author Conan Doyle, who was the author that was responsible for the Sherlock Holmes series, which I absolutely adored. And this book is called The History of Spiritualism. It was printed in, I think he wrote it in 1926. I'm going to look real quick. Um, the History of Spiritualism, Volume 1. And it is 1926. Yeah, originally, originally from in 1926. And it's an old musty book, quite thick. And I read it some time ago, and I was just going back through it again for for this video. And I was looking at my notes. Boy, it does smell musty. <laughs> Which really kind of makes it more fun because you get the feeling of that old, old kind of um, reading in there. So, Sir, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was a spiritualist. And he, was, he didn't believe everything that was uh done by mediums um he i mean he would at times say that that one's a fake or whatever but for the most part he was very credulous the story is that he was credulous because his son died in world war one and i believe during world war one that was a big surge of spiritualism in england obviously because of so many deaths and deaths of young healthy um, people are especially their sons who were sent off to war. So really sad. Um, these kinds of things are do surge um, an interest in mediumship. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's wife, she became a medium and they had a long relationship. Well, many year relationship, Doyle and Harry Houdini. And I'm going to talk about that in another video, their relationship. This book, as I said, is a is a book written by a very credulous, and I can say that now, especially here in oh gosh, it's been almost a hundred years since it was published. Time, it, he he, it it was pretty. There was some no, he had no business being this this gullible, but sometimes, and you if you were to talk to James Randi. You would understand that lots of people who are considered extremely intelligent, um, you know, scientists and lawyers and people who should know better, actually can be some of the most credulous people because you tend to get into a frame where you think you know, you know, just because you're brilliant on one subject doesn't mean that you're brilliant on all subjects and you don't think you can be fooled. So, therefore, you can be fooled. And anyway. Um, so about this book, so I uh, some of the notes that I made, I said Doyle is not a history writer. He's not object, objectable, object, that's the right word, objectable. Huh, wonder about that. Criticizes those that criticize spiritualism. He deems a man credible just because his friends say they're credible. And I have a quote here. They were earnest minded folk who were incapable of any conscious deception. Look, folks, it, it isn't a balance where somebody is telling the truth or telling a lie. And there's no gray area in the middle. Lots of times people are telling the truth, but don't have a good understanding of the fact. They're not lying. They just don't understand or they were tricked. It's not either black or white. You know, come on. You should know that, Doyle. Come on. Okay, so here, here's a quote for him. The facts are as follows. And this is opinion, uh, according to Doyle. I'm using this to explain how opinionating he was in this book. So the facts are as follows. His mind was warped by early training in the narrow school of the Scottish church, crude views, and impossible Protestantism, impossible Catholicism still poisoned the heavy human soul. 
And that's six biased remarks all in just one sentence. Uh, crude, warped, narrow, impossible, another impossible, and poisoned. Just one sentence. He, he didn't have a lot of, he wasn't much into religion. He believed spiritualism was the new religion. And it was the perfect religion because it encompassed all religions. So he was a very interesting character there. And so he talks a lot about his personal point of view, and which that's nice. If you're writing a book about your personal point of view, that's an opinion. That's not history. And this is called the history of spiritualism. It should be the the opinion of Sir Colin, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle of spiritualism and mediumship. Um, he talks a lot about um, personal knowledge, and this is one of the things that he does. Is that he he anybody who criticizes spiritualism, they're thrown aside. They don't know what they're talking about. Absolutely, couldn't have a have a clue. And if you um, Anything that is told to him that he believes, like he's told to him by a credible source, what he considers a credible source, is fact, not an antidote, 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 which is what it really is. Why? Um, anything that challenges mediumship should be thrown to the side. And I want to I want to talk about just really briefly one thing, and this is about the Fox sisters. And I talked about the Fox Sisters, uh, a book on the Fox Sisters in an earlier volume. This is on page 73, well, 73, 72. And they're talking about, actually 61. And he's talking about uh, the Fox Sisters and the history of what happened in, it's called the Hydesville episode, which is what happened in New York in 1848 about a year after the fox sisters had moved there and those are the two sisters who kind of more or less started the modern um spiritual movement spiritualism movement and here's what he says he says that in the opinion of many by far the most important thing that america has given to the commonwealth of the world was what happened in this little house by these two sisters, the Fox sisters, Kate and Maggie. So that was like, it, as of 1926, the most important thing that America had ever given to the Commonwealth. And then it spreads over to the UK. And then of course I took the bookmark out. So try not to mark up the book too much. It's the point. It was, um, Again, we know from my from the other book review that I gave that the the girls, the Fox sisters, accused a man uh, by the name of Bell of killing a peddler, the person who comes door to door selling wares, and killing him and burying his body in the basement of the house. And so the neighbors all went kind of nuts trying to find the body, and they kept trying to trying to uh, dig it up and they went all through the the ground multiple times trying to dig the person out of the ground this uh, peddler to prove that the girls were um, actually mediums and in contact with the with this dead peddler now what happened is when they went down there and they were trying to find the body of the peddler what they found was that every time they dig more than you know a little bit water would come through because they're there was a lot of water on the property. Oh, there it is. And the, um, so it was searched for years and years and years. The property was searched for years and they were trying to find anything that had evidence of the peddler being there. So that was in 1848. And then sadly, the family the Bell family, the man who had owned the house previously to the Fox family, he was accused of murdering this peddler. And I don't know if his name was ever cleared, but it was really awful, just really awful. These girls accused him of that and that he had, you know, his reputation ruined because of that. So 1848. Then in 1904, so like 50 years later, two children 
discovery made by school children playing in the cellar of the building known as the spook house spook house um, the children are playing in in the basement and they come across in the wall the bones of the peddler and they also discover a box a little metal box that held the uh, peddler's tin box that held all the little things he had in there and that was, I guess, supposedly in the wall of the basement. Now, 50 years after this place has been searched, you can't dig in there. There's no way you could dig in there because every time you dig, water comes up and it's it's a mess. And it, if there was a body in there, they would have found it a long time ago. And buried in the wall? Mm, yeah. So that's not what we were told later. So um, we, according to Doyle, Sir Arthur Corner of Doyle, he says that this clears the Fox sisters of the only shadow of doubt held concerning their sincerity in the discovery of spirit communication. So there you go. So somebody told him this, therefore it's true. And he really didn't do much research. I think he might have looked at a newspaper account. Well, it was 1926, but he was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So he had the ability to go all over the place and, you know, do what he wanted to do. He was a very wealthy, famous man. In fact, he came to America many times. And I believe he did know the Fox sisters and he thought that they were genuine. He, um, we know um, now, and I don't know when it was discovered, but we know that those bones that were discovered were like chicken bones. They weren't bones of a human being. And I believe that the peddler's tin they found was not a peddler's tin. It was maybe some coin or some some bits and pieces of metal. So what he's told is what he thinks. So this is an interesting book. I would recommend it to anybody who is a scholar of, um, of spiritualism or mediumship in, in the day. But keep it in mind that this is really the believer side. And I mean a really a big time believer he talks about spirit photography, which is something I'm going to talk about here really soon on another video. So check that out. Ectoplasm. Yeah, he's got it. Ectoplasm is, is in. He talks about other mediums. He talks about other, uh, the Davenport, Davenport brothers, which I don't think I'm going to ever do a video on because I haven't read enough about them. But they were um, mediums that would be put in these giant cabinets. And they'd be tied inside and there'd be musical instruments with them. They'd close the doors, turn out all the lights. And then you hear the musical instruments playing because the Davenport brothers had gotten themselves out of a cabinet and untied themselves. Why, oh, why did somebody think that that was going to be evidence of mediumship? I don't know, but that was a kind of a thing for a while there. So um, it's an interesting book. Like I said, if you are interested in, in the history of mediumship from the viewpoint of somebody who's a complete believer and a huge influence in the world of mediumship and spiritualism. So in your journey to understand mediumship, I wouldn't skip Doyle just because, uh, you know, he was, he believed in little fairies in the woods. And you know, that's interesting too, because the cotton leaf fairies was the little fairies that were cut out of from a book and they were, um, they were put in a, a garden and these two little cousins came out and I think there were 10 and 13 and nine or something. And they took pictures of supposedly the fairies that they were playing with, but actually they were just cut out from a, from a, um, a book and they used to like their hairpins and made them stand up in the woods. And it was obviously a fraud. I mean, it was so obvious, but Doyle could not believe that those little girls had the skills to to fool him or the skills to to make photographs like that even though the their father i believe one of the fathers worked for a um, um like eastern kodak or whatever it was back then in that day some one of the big uh companies of uh, cameras and so he didn't believe those little girls could fool him and so he believed they were real. And it's the same thing in here. He, he he thinks of the Fox sisters as these little girls that could possibly never have thought of anything like that. Hey, I, I was a little girl and I know a lot of little girls. And let me tell you, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, 
we could have fooled you and we continue to fool you because that's how we are. We could be clever. You don't have to be a boy to be clever. Anyway, good reading. So if you like this, please subscribe. Please leave comments. I'm looking for more books that um, are interesting to have to uh, maybe should be in your arsenal in your toolbox for your uh, reading for uh, historical books as well as current books. I'm trying to get through more of the history of the books in spiritualism and mediumship and then get into more of the critical thinking books. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit the little bell so that you can be notified when I upload another, another video. Thanks, guys.